Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Kathleen Walter. Protests, peace, and the papacy. Pope Benedict XVI arrived in Great Britain on Thursday for a visit mired in controversy even before the pontiff touched down. Joining us with a report from Glasgow, Scotland, is Newsmax Vatican correspondent Ed Penton, who is with us now via the phone. Ed, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, good to be with you. Pope Benedict is making an historic trip, praying with the Archbishop of Canterbury at Westminster Abbey and visiting Birmingham to beatify Cardinal John Henry Newman. What is the mood like there? Uh, the mood is, um, well, it depends who you're with, really, but if the Catholic, among the Catholics, the mood is, a, is one of great excitement and festivity. Um, as I speak, in fact, uh, Susan Boyle is singing uh, at the Mass in Glasgow, and there's great atmosphere here. Um, and so far, at least, there have been no signs, or very few signs, of protest or any uh, serious antagonism about the visit. Uh, there have been a few minor protests, some, some Americans, funny enough, who, who came over to uh, protest about uh, uh, the poor handling of the child sex abuse crisis, um, but they were very small and there'd be no sort of uh, shoutings or, or uh, serious threats made against the Pope. So overall, so far, it's gone very well, and he had a good reception um, for, uh, at the Queen, by the Queen at Holyrood House, which is her official residence in Scotland. Um, he met all the, uh, the dignitaries, the VIPs, the uh, politicians, um, church leaders, interreligious leaders. Um, and now he's about to go on his way to Mass in uh, Glasgow, uh, where he has a large open, open air Mass here in about an hour's time. Why did the Pope make the visit, and why is it so important to the Catholic Church and to Europe? Right, well, his, his most important message, I think, which he wants to get across here, which he also mentioned in his uh, official reception with the Queen earlier today, is to try and um, restore the Christian, Christian roots of Europe. Um, he, in his speech to the Queen, he said that Britain has a very deep roots, very cult deep cultural roots, um, Christian roots, and he says so much good has come from that. And he warned that, um, he warned about an aggressive atheism which threatens to undo all of that and lead to tyranny. He, he refers a lot to his experience in Nazi Germany, um, and that in, impacted him a great deal. And he's very aware that nations that turn away from God, turn away uh, and turn towards a very secular state, um, end up leading to tyranny. And um, that's the message he's got, got across straight off the bat, if you like, in, in his message to the Queen. I think it's one we'll hear quite regularly during this four-day visit. Ed, you say that all in all things there are pretty calm, but this is a visit that has been marked by some tension. What is it about His Holiness or the Catholic Church that has some Britons most upset? The UK is largely Christian. The Pope hasn't even gotten this type of response or controversy in Muslim nations. That's a very good point. Um, I think the, the reason is that there is a, a, a real tradition in Britain of um, a minority, if you like, of secular opinion, which has rather become mainstream. Uh, and it's become quite virulent, quite hostile, particularly in parts of the media and a few very vocal uh, minority. Um, and it's, it's partly due to the, to the history of Britain. Um, and it has a very sort of utilitarian scientific emphasis in many ways, um, going back to the Enlightenment. And that that car that's carried over, and it's, the Pope is the target for that because he, of course, stands for something very opposite, or, or they, at least they think it's opposite to scientific thought and rationalism. Of course, the Pope says that reason is all very good, rationalism very good, but you must have faith as well. There must be faith and reason, and those are the two, um, the two matrices, if you like, which, uh, which are very important to him. And, those, and that again is something that he'll try and get across at this visit. And a senior Vatican official, Cardinal Walter Casper, was quoted in a magazine as saying that Britain is plagued by a new and aggressive atheism. Can you put his remark into context for us? What is it about this brand of atheism that has him particularly alarmed? Yes, um, well, that comment about atheism was also echoed by the Pope as well. Um, and he's particularly referring, I think, to sort of ideological atheism of the type of, say, Richard Dawkins and... Christopher Hitchens, those sort of atheists who are really antagonizing um, and totally ruling out any sort of dialogue with religion. Um, 
and those, that's, that's his main point. Um, now, the, the other point about Cardinal Casper that he made about Britain being like a third world country, which has got, a, got on a lot of uh, newspapers here, um, of course, he didn't mean it like that. I think, he, I think what he meant was the impression is when you arrive at Heathrow Airport, you see a lot of people from different nationalities. And I think he's, he's old now, he's retired this year, and I think he just didn't think about the effect that his words would have. Um, but again, I mean, that's, uh, that's a separate issue, but uh, something which um, he may well apologize for in the coming days. Ed, how does the Pope feel about the growth of Islam in Great Britain and, and in Europe? Well, he sees that, on one hand, he looks at it in two ways. On one hand, he admires Islam for its strength of belief. He, he admires Muslims for um, being strong in their convictions. On the other hand, um, he does he is concerned that Muslims will come in the place of Christians in Europe because Christianity is declining in, in some respects in Europe. And so he sees Islam as perhaps stepping in and becoming a sort of, and then Europe losing its Christian roots and becoming a sort of Islamified continent. Um, now that's obviously a concern that's been, long, been around for quite a while. Um, and then again, and then it returns to his concern about Europe not wanting to lose its Christian roots, that the whole identity of Europe is Christian. You talked earlier about the Pope's purpose in Britain. Um, still, many people are very upset about the sex abuse crisis scandal. How effective is the Pope at mending fences? Uh, he's, he is, uh, I think people see him as, um, when they see him, they see him as someone different to the sort of media interpretation that you get of, um, of the Pope. Um, he is very conciliatory, he's very humble. Um, he's very willing to listen and to dialogue, and this is something which doesn't often get across in the, in the press. Um, and so he is very good at building bridges, and it, he's very good, it, he's very interested, and it's one of his priorities to build bridges with, um, not only with Islam and other religions, but also within Christianity, with other, with other denominations, with uh, Protestants, with the Orthodox. He wants to dialogue and, and bring together all of these um, entities, if you like, on common values, common values related to the natural law, which uphold human dignity. I mean, that's, that's basically his approach to all of these issues. Ed, last question real quickly, and we'll let you get back to covering the Pope and Susan Boyle. Pope John Paul II was beloved by Catholics around the world. Do you see Benedict XVI as having an equally powerful and positive influence as John Paul? Well, they're two very different people. Uh, John Paul was an actor. He was a, a great statesman on the world stage, if you like. He, he strode the world, and he had great charisma. Pope Benedict, on the other hand, is a, is a professor. He's an academic. He'd rather be, if he was honest, he'd probably say he'd rather be with his books, reading and researching and writing, um, rather than out there on the world stage. So you've got two very different personalities. Um, it's said that people came to see Pope John Paul II, but they come to hear Pope Benedict. Um, he's very much a cerebral person. He's, he's someone who you want to read rather than perhaps go and see. So these are two different, very different uh, personalities that have a great impact and have obviously a message which they want to get across in different ways. All right, Newsmax Vatican correspondent Ed Penton, thanks so much for joining us and also for your great coverage. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV. Thank you.